Okay, I'm going to call the uh, meeting of the Water and Wastewater Commission of October 18th. I'll now call the meeting to order. Uh, please be advised that FATV is conducting an audio and video recording of this meeting for public broadcast. I ask that anyone in the audience who is recording this meeting please identify themselves for the record. No one's here, so I think we're okay. Um, at this time, I ask that all electronic devices be placed in silent mode. Uh, let's see, we'll do a roll call. Where am I? Uh, George Cena? Mike McLaughlin? Yes. Colby O'Brien? Here. And Nick Erickson? Here. And Mark McNamara is here as yeah. representing the wastewater division. Um, Okay, let's, we do not have, uh, we don't have minutes, so we'll accept them at the next meeting. Um, and there is not a public forum. Uh, so we're gonna start off with the water division. John DeLine is sick today. So Nick, you're going to bring us up to date on water division. Thank you. Um, the only agenda I have um, today to speak to on behalf of uh, John DeLine is a grant that the city was awarded to um, start investigating some of the issues of seepage at Scott Reservoir Dam. Um, so the, this is through the state's um, dam and seawall repair or removal program. And the city was awarded $76,800 to um, conduct this initial investigation to begin the design process for repairing the issues at Scott Reservoir Dam. Um, so I've provided you with a pack, packet that includes a contract with the state um, and the scope of work and background, et cetera, for the work to be done underneath this grant effort. Um, there is a 25% city match, 25,600. Um, so um, if you've got any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Um, otherwise, I would be seeking a motion to um, accept the grant funds and approve the expenditure of the grant funds for the purposes outlined in the scope of work that you have in front of you. Do we have uh, any questions for Nick? Quick question, has the contractor to do this work already been found? Like, is this a quote, like everything's ready to go? So we, we worked with one of our on-call engineering consultants, uh, Fuss and O'Neill, to develop the grant application, and um, we submitted it with some assistance from them, um, and the intention would be to, to award the work to them underneath that on-call contract that we have as, as the contract vehicle. Um, so they helped us develop this scope of work and put together some of the numbers that we then used for the grant application and submitted to the, the EEA. Any other questions? Okay, do we have a motion to, um, let's see, accept the funds and approve the expenditure? Is that what we're looking for, Nick? Yes. Yeah. I'll make that motion. Do we have a second? Any discussion on the motion? And none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. I'm, I think I should probably recuse myself, but okay. Any opposed? Motion carries with Nick. Okay. Recruiting himself. Thank you. Um, and that was only the, the only agenda item um, for today. So I assume when John's back for the next meeting, he'll have a, a few other things to update you on. Okay. Thanks, Nick. Uh, Mark, uh, wastewater. All right. I got some updates on the projects that are ongoing right now and one that will be beginning next year. The first item is CSL 10 project, the one that's ongoing, that's affecting North Main Street up to River Street. Right now, everything's going well. The contract and the construction is going on schedule, um, proceeding nicely. It's the detour is scheduled to end around November 15th, and they're on track for that. Um, weather permitting, of course, you know, we'll see how that goes. And right now, they have, uh, <clears throat> they're working on School Street. They're having a new drainage installed there. Some of the areas they have completed have been Park Street, the new sewer installations completed, Lower Bond Street, the new drain installation and water main replacement is complete, Goddard Street at Bond Street is complete, and Chestnut Street, new sewer installation has been completed. Um, shortly to be pro uh, projected to begin soon is paving on West Street, and they're going to be paving from Ashburnham Hill Road over to Wallace Road. So that will be starting shortly. 
Um, any questions on the CSO 10 project? Any questions? Yes. You do? Oh. Yeah, but go ahead. Oh. oh. Do you have a question? Yeah. Oh, okay, go ahead. Um, that portion of road that starts at the park and goes over to Wallace, is that what you're talking about we're paving? Let me um, bring it up. I believe it's from Ashburn Am Hill Road over to Wallace. Right. Where everybody dumps? Don't yeah, through that. that section where everyone dumps. So now they'll have a smooth ride on the way to dumping. Okay. Yeah, I say that sarcastically, but it is an issue. I know we put up a fence there a number of years ago um, to help stop some of that illegal dumping, but the fence has since been damaged and people are still dumping. Mm -hmm. um, and they've actually cut out a section of fence to continue to do so. So yeah. we repair it on occasion when, when we notice that it's been damaged or compromised. That's the fence that borders the park, right? It, it's along that embankment. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's the park, and then there's another property further that is downhill. Yeah. So this may not be a topic for now, but that road has no purpose. There's no houses on it other than two at the end. We've had issues for years and years for dumping. Um, our roads are in bad shape. We all know that. Why are we spending money paving that road? I know there was talk in the past of, well, just abandoning it. It, it has, has no purpose. So it, I, it has no purpose other than it is a cut through and it's a detour for when River Street is closed um, and Mass DOT has their upcoming bridge project and that that project's going to be ongoing for a couple of years with the yeah. road closed. So Can't it's going use to be Sheldon. Used as a detour. Um, I, I suppose you could use Sheldon, um, but you're still going to need to be on a part of West Street for that. The piece from Ashburn Am Hill to Sheldon. Ashburn Ham Hill to Sheldon. Okay, I guess I don't understand. West Street technically starts, so if you're heading from Main Street westbound. Yeah. Um, you know, you go through the roundabout. It starts at the on. rotary, right? No, that's Main Street continues from the rotary through Greektown to Ashburnham Hill. Yep. Then it starts West Street at Ashburnham Hill and goes through to Wallace. Yes. So, so again, if you're using it as a can detour, can we use Sheldon? Still, you could, but you'd still need that that piece of West Street Why? between Sheldon and Ashburnham Hill as the the route. Okay. I, mean, I, I guess to your point, I guess you could consider abandoning the section of West Street from Sheldon to Wallace. Um, there are homes on the Wallace end that we would still need to get to. Sure. Yeah, there's two. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Thanks. Go ahead, Mark. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> the next item I have is the CSO project um, after this one's completed. And that is the CSO 32, 45, and 83. We just completed the SRF loan package and it was submitted to the state last Friday. Um, they received it, we got confirmation. And we're hoping to see construction begin on that sometime next year. Um, I handed out a little bit of description of what that project entails and where it's going to be um, focused on. Um, on page two, you see all the streets that we're gonna be addressing. Um, let me just read a little bit of the description of how much work it is going to be. Um, the, pr the scope of the work is going to be approximately construction of 1,661 1, linear feet of PVC sewers, construction of 17,968 linear feet of high density polyethylene and PVC drains, construction of 350 linear feet of concrete box culverts, Construction of up to 1,542 feet, linear feet of ductile lion water mains. Installation of 170 manholes. Installation of five double barrel structures. Installation of five sump structures. Installation of 66 catch basins. And installation of 26 curb inlets. 
Um, and then there's also further work that is listed down there. So it's going to be a big project. It's going to affect that whole area over there for about two years. And, but once it gets done, it's probably going to be the biggest impact on improvement to the wastewater treatment plant that we've seen. Um, there's a lot of infiltration that comes in from that area. We waste a lot of money on chemicals down at the treatment plant, treating just rainwater and river water. So when this gets done, we should see a great improvement to what's going on. Um, we're hoping to have the bids out next April, and then early May have the bids opened and awarded, and then construction commencing sometime after that. So and then, like I said, it'll go on for about two years for that project. And then it'll take care of the CSO 32, 45, and 83, which are all right down that main line. Okay. Any questions on that one? As uh, we get closer to the thing, I'll have more information as we go. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> um, I'm back to the roads, right? And this does kind of relate. It seems like nobody can build a manhole that holds up, right? Um, Lunenburg had all of, was it 13 paved recently? And they had to go and redo all the manholes because they all sunk. Mm -hmm. Main Street, it's not in great shape, but you still have to do this. It's the manholes. Do we have a spec so that when this work gets done, it isn't somebody stacking bricks and pouring a little dry concrete in there or mortar and stacking bricks? Is, is there a better method? Is there something that when we spend these millions of dollars that we can have a better, longer lasting product? I guess the, the answer is not easy. Um, so the typical spec includes bricks and mortar to level out the, the, the flange of the catch basin or manhole structure, whatever, you know, whatever you're working on. And the issue is that salt gets down in there during the winter time and erodes away the mortar and then the bricks eventually crumble and that's when you get the settling. Um, or the contractor doesn't compact the subgrade well and the whole structure sinks, that's, a, that's another problem. So part of it is just making sure that our construction inspectors do a good job of making sure that there's adequate number of bricks used, um, the right mixture of mortar. Sometimes if the mixture isn't made correctly, it doesn't last. So if there's too much sand in it, for example, or making sure that that compaction happens. There are some products out there nowadays that um, they're, they're composite material um, leveling rings for manhole structures like that. Um, so we could spec those out for, for this project. I mean, it, we're, we're at the point right now where we could incorporate those types of changes in, into the design. Mm. Um, is there a concrete ring that does a better job? They make concrete rings. The, the problem is you're dealing with the crown of the road. So you, it, every structure is custom to the, the structure itself and then the, the grade of the road and kind of some of the other stuff that you're dealing with. Yeah. Um, so I don't think there's a one size fits all concrete ring that you could use, um, but we could certainly look into, even if it's just a section of the product project, trying out a different method and seeing how well it holds up. Yeah, you know, again, it's just, we're, we're doing it. it. It usually costs the same amount of money to do it right as it mm -hmm. does to not do it right. And we've all experienced um, what our roads are like right and, and and it just seems it's everywhere they sink okay how come in other towns they don't sink well they do i mean yeah, you just I, I mean yeah but, you know are, are, are there measures steps measures or product difference we can we can do just so things last a little long i'd be open to trying the um the the composite rings and we could we could talk to weston and sampson and see if they've got any other ideas too I'm just a board member, you're the expert, so I just, you know, like to bring to light when I see things that hopefully could, we could do a little better on. That's a good suggestion. That's a good idea. So we'll yeah, talk to we'll Weston and Sampson next design workshop we have with them and see if they've got any, any experiences that we could benefit from. Awesome. Okay. And one other thing I wanted to mention, so I know you talked about Apple Tree Hill. Um, I, I don't recall from the, the design plans that I've seen so far what is rehab versus what is new construction. So I'm guessing because that road, the sewer was installed back in the 60s, it was yeah. probably clay pipe or concrete pipe back then. 
and it's probably got a lot of I and I infiltration in the flow. Mm -hmm. okay. So my guess is that's either some sort of a, a, a trench rehab or trenchless rehab where they'd line the pipe just okay. to stop that inflow. Um, but I'll confirm and, and let you know. Good, thanks. All right, the next item I have is the, um, the upgrades down the wastewater treatment plant, the lab slash control room project. It's also including refurbishing um, the last two remaining um, clarifiers that we have down there. They're original to the plant, 1975. They haven't been an ounce of refurbished ever since they were put in, and they're in um, atrocious shape. So we're finally getting around to fixing that problem, and at the same time, I'm gonna be bringing the, the whole plant up to ADA uh, standards, the, um, the locker room area and the lab and the control room. I'm gonna get rid of the Chernobyl-looking control panel we have down there and updating it to something more modern and usable because there's nothing on there right now that actually functions. And so we had, the bids came back on September 28th for that and they actually came in uh, a little bit lower than what we estimated. So um, the RH White Construction came in with a bid of $4.6 million for the project. And right now we are checking their credentials, making sure that everything is on the up and up with them and everything passes muster. And once our consult consulting engineer is satisfied, then we'll give them an award to that and get a notice to proceed going. Um, we're hoping that that will begin soon. It takes, it's gonna be about a 12 month project and it's gonna be a little disruptive to the treatment plant down there. We're gonna have to do some of our testing and labs and stuff in trailers while this is going on. But this will be almost the final project down there that we need to do that the DEP really wants us to tackle until we find out whether we have to do a tertiary treatment down the road, but that's far enough down the road that we have some time to think about it. Um, and the last item I have is, a, um, once again, the staffing update. Uh, we have a couple of vacancies. We had the GIS engineer position that became vacant in June. We posted a position and it, the last day for applications was um, last Sunday, the 15th. We got a good pool of candidates. So right now we're going through the resumes, looking to see who we want to interview. And probably in two weeks from today, we're gonna sit down and select a good candidate and get that up and running. Um, and then the last one I have is the senior operator at the treatment plant. We had a retirement back in June for a, one of our senior operators. We have five senior operators. Um, we're mandated to have at least one of them on shift at all times down there, 24 hours a day. And so we're dealing, we're working with just four covering all the shifts. And so through the whole summer, they've been pulling double shifts and it's getting old right now, <laughs> as you can imagine. And we posted the job back in the springtime and we didn't get any qualified candidates. So we are reposting it and looking at various professional websites and see if we can get you know, some type of interest this time. We are competitive with our rates, but it's just that the, there's not that many people out there with the proper license. Um, I looked at back at the last uh, statistics for the passing grade for a grade six license was 11%. So it's a tough test. So. We're trying to get creative in how we can fill the slots. We're looking at how we can train the staff down there that are operators into passing their grade six tests. So we're mulling a few ideas on how we can assist them in doing that, mentoring them, training them, holding classes or something. But it's something that we're trying to fix. We're in the same boat as most other treatment plants right now when it comes to staffing. So but the guys that still have a proper attitude, they're still good and they're still doing a good job. So, and that's what, all I have right now. What happens if you lose another guy? We're gonna have to seriously restructure the staffing. I mean, we did have a plan for, if it happened to go down to three. And you're talking, you know, 12 hour shifts, one week on, one week off, stuff like that. It's workable, but it's, it's not preferable. It's, it's people like normal stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
We looked at various ways of maybe lowering the level of the treatment plant. You know, we're a grade seven facility. We're the second biggest facility in Central, Central Mass uh, behind Worcester. But no matter what we look at, the processes just require us to have a grade seven at all times. And so there's not much we can do. And how could you, is there a way to structure your current staffing model to be more lucrative for people that want to come in and do this kind of work? We'd have to look. We'd have to see what the need is for them. Um, a lot of times people come to a different, you know, community based on either it's paying them a good amount of more money or it's closer to home or they burned a bridge where they're at <laughs> mm -hmm. and they're looking to move somewhere else. <laughs> um, we've had that before. So we're looking at everything right now. So we'll find out. We have been talking with the state too, the licensing board, and finding out what other communities have done. And they're trying to do something on the state level to increase the license levels, but it's really individuals wanting to move up and take the test and study for it. Right now, it's a it's a sparse field. Any other questions? I just had one. I hate to backtrack, but okay. the um, the project that you're talking about, the new CSO project, um, this one that's going on, or the next the one? The new one, the next one. Yeah, thirty. After that one, how many how many combined sewers are we going to have at that point, or or is that take care of them? Well, we do. By the time that gets done, will be four more. Will be off. I'm sorry. One, we're doing CSO 10 now, so that will be closed. And then the next project is three of them, 32, 45, and 83. Right. I don't re remember how many are left after that. Mm -hmm. I think there's at least three projects. Yeah, I would say three. Three. Um, yeah, I want to say there's, there's at least three to four projects, and each one is at least one, maybe two regulators. Um, I don't know exactly the, the number of miles of combined sewer we'll still have after the Main Street project, but. Um, yeah. Interesting. Okay, great. Any other business? Okay, that concludes our agenda. The next meeting will be November, November 15th uh, here at 700 Main Street. Uh, and if there's no other business, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll make that motion, please. Second. We are adjourned. Thank you.